Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Agave Talk, your number one source for everything agave. We appreciate you being here with us today. Today, super excited for this episode. We have an entire lineup of some really great agave spirits And all of these are imported by Back Bar Project. Yes, if you go to backbarproject.com, Back Bar Project, they are a U.S. importer of a collection of premium spirit brands. And in front of us, we have their entire agave lineup. Yes, we got three mezcals, we have a sotol, and we even have tequila to round us out on the end. All right. So we appreciate you being here with us today. If you have not done so already, hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. Now that we got that out of the way, again, super excited for this. We got some mezcalos to taste, some really great brands. This is coming from Casa Cortez. Yes, Casa Cortez is a producer of some great mezcals. Uh, They are a six-generation producer. They've been producing mezcals for six-generation. Agave de Cortez is one of their brands. Another is El Jorgorio. If you are a mezcal drinker, you know and can see these bottles from a mile away. You know the quality that is in there. And they also produce Nuestra Solidad. Yes, This one family, Casa Cortez, the producer, actually produces all three of these brands, all right? Uh, They are 100% Oaxacan owned. Uh, They are working with 17 different families in 16 different regions across Oaxaca, and they are producing some stellar mezcal. Yes, they are. Um, On to here, we have Siempre. Yes, Satol por Siempre. And I know we said we have a a whole lineup of different agave spirits here. Well, Satol is not agave. Okay, guys? It's not agave. It's not a cactus. It is a variety plant in its own family. I always mess up this word. It's actually made from a plant called the Dasalirian. Um, I just feel like whenever I say it, I have to think about it. But it is the Dasalirian plant, um, and it's nicknamed the Desert Spoon. Uh, really cool stuff right here. If you've never drunk a Satol, I would highly recommend it. Um, Satol is a, it's really in the Sonoran, it's native to the Sonoran Desert um, and the Chihuahuan Desert as well in Mexico. And it's also across the American Southwest. So you might see some Satols that are actually being produced here in the States. Um, It's because they are across the American Southwest as well. So pretty interesting. If you've never tried one, um, highly recommend it. This will be my first chance trying this brand, Satol Por Siempre, and I am very excited. Looking then down at the very end, a new brand to me as well. I have never tried this before. In Jalisco Tequila, we both have their Blanco and the Reposado here. Pretty cool branding right up on the front. Let me try to get that in focus because I know it has the NOM. There we go. This is from NOM1499. You could check that out online. Uh, But in Jalisco Tequila themselves, pretty cool brand. Been reading up on them a little bit. Uh, Something that really stood out to me is that they use eight kilos of agave per liter of tequila. For a reference, to put that kind of into perspective, uh, entry level 100% agave tequilas, they're saying use only one to three kilos per liter. So you have to think about that. Even though something says it's 100%, would you want a 100% tequila that only uses one kilo of agave? Or would you want a 100% tequila that uses eight kilos of agave? The way my brain is processing that is that it's like agave concentration. They're putting way more agaves into their brand than other brands. So even though both brands might be, you know, brand A is 100% uh, agave and Jalisco is 100% agave, 
What in Jalisco is saying is that they're actually using more kilos of agave per liter. And that to me really stood out. Um, so very excited to try this brand. I've never had it before. They're also saying too, there are no additives whatsoever um, in their aged expressions. So also very excited to try to Reposado. Man, this is a great lineup. What I'm gonna end up doing is pouring all of these out. Gonna give you the nose, of course. Gonna give you the taste as well. And uh, we're happy to have you here on this journey together, all right? Give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, we are back. You can notice I moved half of the tasting off camera and we are left right now to begin with these three. Yes, these three different brands all falling under the Casa Cortez roof. And we are going to start with Agave de Cortez. So Agave de Cortez is actually a Esparin Hoven, yes. And <clears throat> we are going to check this out right here. Mm. It's a sweet smoke. Oh, that is the very first smell I'm getting it. You get the smokiness, but it's a sweet smokiness. Oh man, that, that, oh, that smells great. So this is roasted in a pit oven, uh, fermented in open air wood tanks and twice distilled in copper still pots. Um, it is made again from Esparin and, and man, that is very sweet on the nose. It's just like a smoky, sweet, kind of fruity. Let's take a sip. Mm. Oh man, <laughs> what you're getting in the glass, um, it's definitely what you're tasting on the mouth. Let me take another sip. Give me a moment. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yeah. So, whew, this is about, it doesn't say on this sample, but oh, it does. Oh, yes, it does. 45%, because I knew they go about from 45 to 55%. Uh, this is a 45% Esparin. But it's like you would never even know. these. That's my love of mezcalos. They're usually higher proof. But the smoothness of them is insane. You don't even think you're drinking a 45%. Just because of how easy these go down. It, it really is. Uh, the taste on this, you're getting smokiness. Uh, you, you're getting a lot of fruitiness though. As sweet as it is smells in the glass as soon as you take that sip you're welcomed by fruity uh, i would say like like strawberry peachish like fruits like that nothing citric i'm not getting like orangey or limey on this um, maybe the tiniest bit on the end but it's more of like that savory kind of fruit um, melon, you're biting into and it's just like watering your mouth. That's what I'm getting from this Agave de Cortez, along with some hints of smoke. It's like a fruity, smoke-filled treat. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, taking a look at our El Jorgorio. El Jorgorio themselves actually specialize, again, three different brands coming from the same house. Uh, El Jorgorio specializes in a range of uh, rare agaves rare unique agave species which them they themselves all have different unique distinct characteristics uh, really cool stuff every bottle is hand marked specific details of each batch uh, that's another reason why i truly love mezcal as well their ability to you know showcase and highlight the production methods where they come from things like that awesome so we have their esparin this is coming in at a 47.8%. Super excited for this. Let's take a, a sniff. Ooh. Oh, man. So very first smell, ultimately, I, I beef jerky. That's the first, <laughs> that is the first thing that came to my mind, beef jerky. Uh, like, it's got a licorice. So definitely some licorice and anise in there. 
I personally hate licorice and I hate anise, but this is not overwhelming. It's complimentary and it's sweet. It's like a, like a sweet teriyaki beef jerky with a little bit of anise smell in there also. That is very interesting. Let's take a sip of this. Mm. Oh man, that goes down so easy. 47.8, that's insane because it went down easier than the 45%. <laughs> if you've ever had the El Jorgorio line, my taste buds, they make some incredible stuff across the board. I really, really enjoy this. Um, the taste of this Esparim, again, that smell was kind of like beef jerky, anise-ish, uh, but sweet, like a teriyaki glaze or something. In the cup, it's not super smoky. Let me take a last sip. Mm. Oh, yeah. In the cup, you're getting a little bit more smokiness um, than from the nose, but it's more of a burnt flavor. It tastes more burnt than smoky, like charred even. So imagine like a, like, sweet teriyaki glazed beef jerky because it is meaty and they sprinkled a little bit of anise on there and then they charred it slightly that is the best way i can describe this el jorgorio asparin uh, that that that's i took you on a journey with that one but man i am digging that um up next we have our nuestra solidad this they pride themselves on being a single Batch, village designated, terroir driven agave esmarin. Why? Because it's made from agave esmarin, but agave esmarin that grows in one region is going to be different from another region. My wine drinkers out there, you know that from year to year, it's going to taste different. That's the beauty of agave because it's going to taste different depending on where the region you got it from, the time of year it was harvested, was there a lot of rain, was there not a lot of rain, stuff like that. It's going to be very dependent um, on where it's grown and all of those factors, and it's absolutely going to affect the flavor. So this right here is at 47%. Um, let's take this glass right here. Uh, ooh Oh, that's interesting. So again, all three of these are Espadines. All three smell completely different. <laughs> uh, what Nuestra Solidad, they take it from six different regions of Oaxaca, um, and they make six different expressions from them, and it's intended to highlight all the different terrain where they're harvested from. Ah, oh, man, this is... You're definitely getting that Espadine smell. It's not smoky the agave de cortez is a lot smokier um, than the nuestra solidad this is not very smoky at all um, you are getting esparin it's more raw like vegetative i'm getting more of like like grassy earthy mm. yeah definitely a little grassy and earthy with hints of smoke but not overwhelming let's take a sip Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Again, they're just being such high proof. They go down so easy. Um, the Nuestra Solidad, this, after drinking these two, I feel these being way more flavorful than this. If I was going to do this in a flight again, I would absolutely start with this. This is more clean. Um, the finish on it is it's not very long it's just a very clean straight to the point uh, mezcal whereas then you start adding on some layers right you got that sweetness you're adding that smoke over here you got teriyaki beef jerky meat like if i was to do this again i would absolutely start with this it is a well-made mezcal it's just very basic to my taste buds right now and especially after drinking both of these, there's not a lot going on right there. But at 47%, and if somebody who's never drank a mezcal before, 
this would absolutely be a great entry level to them uh, because it's it's smooth. It's great flavor. Let me take this last sip. Mm. Mm. It's letting that espadine shine. Whereas these got some unique flavors going on. This right here is absolutely letting that espadine shine. It is the star to show. And it's a very um, entry level to what that espadine agave should taste like. This whole lineup from Casa Cortez, absolutely incredible. This could be its own video itself. <laughs> but guess what? We still got three more spirits to go. All right. I'll be right back with our Setol Por Siempre. All right, everybody. We are back. Ended up pouring out the Setol Por Siempre. This, uh, if you've never had a Setol before and you are either really into agave spirits or you're just learning, there are so many great brands and spirits out there uh, that use agaves and or for a lack of better words a cousins to agave <laughs> like we have here with our Satol. all right this right here the brand uh Satol por siempre this Satol is clocking in at a 45 percent and um again really unique spirit in itself i would highly recommend you go google Satol, read about it Again, it's native across the Sonoran and Chihuahuan deserts. Also grows in the American Southwest. Uh, this right here, there's 15 species of Dacelerian. All right. That's the official name of Satol, like the scientific name. Uh, but most is made from a species called Waleri, um, Lyophyllum, and Sidrosinum. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, all right, guys? I just like agave spirits. But these, it's it's so cool. I highly recommend you go Google Satol and read up more about it. Uh, the Desert Spoon, it's a shrub-like plant. It takes about 8 to 22 years of age to mature. And unlike agave, can continue living and blooming again after harvesting, if harvested carefully above the root system. So they actually use this also too. They use this, uh, you know, native people, ancient people, they've used this to provide food, clothing, shelter, medicine. Um, and the plant itself, super interesting. Go down that rabbit hole, please, I implore you. Uh, but right now, we are about to share the nose and taste of this spirit. And thank you, Sotol Por Siempre. Let's see. Um, ooh. <laughs> Uh, if you've never had a Satola before, it's, it's interesting. This right here, ooh, mm, I mean, I'm getting smells of mint. I'm getting, whoops, the camera just went out. I'm getting smells of mint. I'm getting smells of cheese. If you like cheese, Parmesan, blue cheese, as Weird as it might sound, it kind of smells like a minty Parmesan cheese. If whether you're watching this on YouTube or you are listening on one of our podcasts, you're probably like, wait, what? Yes, this right here, it smells like a minty Parmesan cheese. Satol is so unique. I've had quite a few brands over the years. And this right here, it's this, they're all so unique. Mm. You can spend minutes and, and I know, you know, time, I, I like to respect our time together, but this with Satoles, you can spend so much time just on the nose, trying to pick out different flavors and different smells. And it's just, it's insane. It really is. Ooh. So this right here, this, I'm getting a lot of mint and just kind of cheesy. That's the best way to describe it. Like old Parmesan cheese, old blue cheese that smells like spearmint, fresh spearmint. Let's take a sip. Mm. 
Oh, man. Again, at 47%, uh, 45, my apologies, at 45%, how easy this goes down. It's just such a unique spirit. It's fresh on the tongue. Again, like you kind of pop in like uh, I'm thinking of that green spearmint gum. I used to eat this back in the day when I was, you know, growing up like in middle school. That green spearmint gum. I forget the brand, but it was like neon green. It's that like freshness, that snappiness as soon as you bite into it. As soon as you sip this, you're getting a rush of mint and spearmint but it's fresh. It just tastes like green, if that makes sense. Bright neon green. Let me take the last sip. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Where I was getting cheesiness in the nose, the taste not so much. That mintiness is still there but now it just kind of tastes more earthy it definitely tastes more earthy grass ish but like even like wet soil um i've had other satols that i mean it's like you taste a take a slice of blue cheese or parmesan and you eat it and that's what you're drinking a cup of that this though it's interesting it kind of tastes like wet soil um even like wet grass fresh cut wet grass you're getting some of that on the palate as well. And just fresh, that spearmint, it, it blasts you in the face. This is a very interesting Satol. Um, and that's why I really enjoy trying these because every brand I've ever tried tastes completely different. I can't describe it. If you've ever had one yourself, you might know. But I implore you, this is Agave Talk. Uh, I implore you to explore not only agaves, but the cousins to agaves as well. And any spirit falling under those categories, um, go get yourself a Satol and, you know, just expand your palate. Highly recommend this. Uh, moving on next, we are getting into the Anjalisco tequila and we'll be right back. All right, we are back and we have Anjalisco tequila last but not least. All right hope you've enjoyed this so far it's definitely a longer than normal episode but i mean with the lineup we had today i gotta give the respect that's due to these brands um they're making some great stuff so i'm super super happy to be here with you guys thank you as well for being with us if you have not done so already please hit that like and subscribe as well as follow us on instagram at agave talk all right so the last lineup from back bar project we have an Jalisco Blanco. Let me get that in. There we go. In focus. This is coming out of 1499 at 40%. And then to end it off, we have the Reposado as well. Uh, getting that in focus. The same. Um, 40%. All right. So in Jalisco, I have never tasted this brand. Uh, check them out. Again, if you go to backbarproject.com. They have information on all the brands we've tasted today, and even at Jalisco themselves have a great story. I shared earlier, you know, they're using a lot more kilos per liter for their tequilas, which is kind of cool. And they're really saying, hey, we have no additives whatsoever. So I'm very excited about that. All right. So let's jump right on in to this Blanco. Ooh, wow. <laughs> mm. So, mm, behind the scenes, Agave Talk here, you know, just being honest with everybody, uh, whenever we have new brands, when we pour it out and I'm smelling it more times than often, I'm smelling it for the first time. <laughs> so those, it, th what you hear me saying, like, as soon as I put this to my nose and I say, wow, like, that is a genuine expression of like, whoa, that hit me, that hit me, hold on. Mm. the agave forward on this it's like mm. so you know we're in miami florida we get a lot of rain it smells after it rains a certain way and even before it rains you can smell the rain coming this smells like agave a chunk full of agave with like 
Fresh rain. That is interesting. Oof. And you're absolutely getting a lot of agave on that. And again, they pride themselves on using more agave per liter, more kilos per liter than other brands. Other brands using one to three, they're saying they're using eight. So absolutely agave forward, fresh, clean. I mean, I'm really not getting anything else but agave. <laughs> Let's take a sip of this. Mm. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Oh, that goes down so good. So easy. I personally love Blancos and Extra Añejos. The reason I love Blancos and it's the reason I love tequila, I love that taste of Blue Weber Agave. Absolutely. And if you've ever actually tasted a chunk of roasted Blue Weber Agave, you bite into it, it's a taste you will never forget. This right here, oh, it's such an agave forward spirit. Let me take this last sip. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's um that's definitely doing um tequila justice. <laughs> if you are a lover of Blancos, you love the agave taste. Absolutely going to recommend you go check out this in Jalisco. That is great stuff. Just very agave forward. Kind of tastes like rainwater, like I said, but just pure. If they were going for your pure Blanco agave tequila, they absolutely captured that in this expression. Super excited. Checking out this Reposado then. Um, normally not a fan of Reposados. You guys know if you have subscribed to our channel. We love Blancos and then Extra Añejos. Both ends of the spectrum. Reposado are, is my least favorite expression. So let's see what this en Jalisco has to do. And um, mm. so they state it all over their website. 100%, no additives whatsoever. Uh, just 100% agave, zero additives. And you're definitely getting some agave on this. Mm. You know, it's interesting. If they did not say no additives, I would question slightly. Mm. As it op as I keep going in, like I, I did smell and the barrels do give, you know, caramel flavors, vanilla flavors, absolutely. What I like about this Reposado is there is, you're still smelling agave, a lot of agave in there. But that first smell, I, if they did not say 0% additives, I would have questioned. But as I continue, you're definitely getting a lot of agave. And some hints of that wood, again, Reposado, I'm not sure how long this has been rested. Um, let me click on their Reposado. Um, Distilled to 55. Whoa, hold on. Oh, is it? No, it says 40%. So I'm on their website right now. And it says, ah, okay. So they distill this Reposado to 55%. And then they bring it down to 42.5 with well water. Um, but during the barrel aging, it naturally mellows to 40%. All right. And it's actually rested for nine months in X bourbon barrels. Mm. And the barrels are blended back together and allowed to rest in stainless steel tanks for two weeks before bottling. That is interesting. Mm. Still on the nose. Haven't even tasted this yet. Again, you're getting a lot of agave. But um, even like some coconut. Some coconut in there. And the website, they're saying creme brulee. I can smell that. I can definitely smell that. Cooked peppers. No, I'm not getting cooked peppers. But definitely some coconut, the creme brulee. That makes sense. Let's take a sip. Cheers. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> mm. Again, goes down super easy. What I'm loving about this repo is I'm still getting a lot of agave flavor. Um but you are getting some coconut, some creme brulee. 
as the website states. I could definitely taste that on here. Um, but it's hints of oakiness too because of the barrels, but like really faint, really light. Um, but again, that agave forwardness of this repo, I do like that. Let me take this last sip. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Velvety feel in the mouth. You're getting some vanilla. Um, that coconut, though, is interesting. You don't really taste that normally unless it is some sort of additive, but they don't have any. So that's interesting. I'm digging this. Both of these, um, man, and Jalisco, I'm, I'm excited. They do not make an Añejo, extra Añejo. They're only making this right now. Hopefully in the years to come, they do bring out an Añejo. I would be very curious to try that. But overall, man, this has been a phenomenal tasting. Um, I do this in one shoot. So again, some behind the scenes, I do this in one shoot, which means as the episodes go on, I start feeling better and better. And uh, this is how it was set up. All right. <laughs> with that being said, man, we appreciate you guys going on this journey with us today. If you have not done so already, please hit that like and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram at Agave Talk. All right. You can catch the podcast, too, on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Um, we're branching out everywhere. This journey is amazing, and we truly appreciate being able to bring you so many cool agave spirits and uh, hopefully if this is the first time you've ever seen any of these brands well guess what remember where you saw it first all right <laughs> cool guys thank you so much for being here with us and take care